get wrecked. A pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto Badgers. Thanks for joining the Crypto Badgers, two DGENs that like to do our research. I'm Max Power, joined as always by Matt, aka Buyers Dips. We are back. Uh, Matt, I've returned from my sojourn, uh, <laughs> my global sojourn, six months on the road. Uh, kind of half keeping an eye on the crypto markets, but not probably enough to warrant, you know, coming in and telling people what they should do. Not that we ever <laughs> do that, because this is all for entertainment here, of course, on the Crypto Badges. Of course, Max. Uh, but it is uh, is good to be back. And here we are, the market in a better place overall than where we left it. Of course, uh, slightly down today, because Matt, there's a fair bit happening in crypto today as we speak. Yeah, indeed. Of course, the big news uh, surrounding Binance, um, you know, with them settling for a little over four billion in uh, in fines, Max. That'd be a, a few rounds of drinks for us on our next golf weekend. What do you reckon? Yeah, that's a it's a big hit. Um, and, was, uh, see, sorry, just gets out his wallet and just puts a few uh, <laughs> a few shekels, a few shekels on the table, and walks <laughs> off into the sunset. And of course, um, uh, as a result of all of this, he's no longer the CEO of Binance as well, which is a which is a pretty big thing. So he's having to walk away from it all. Um, but by the looks of it, no sort of prison time or anything like that. It's, uh, hard to get to the bottom of that, but I think he's pretty pretty good to go. But uh, obviously, the Binance, uh, the, well, the BNB tokens taken a pretty big hit uh, down around ten percent. Uh, at the time of this recording. So uh, I think really at the end of the day, I think uh, the SEC were really looking to sort of minimise Binance's, uh, I guess, control over the market before, you know, sort of any Bitcoin ETF may be approved. And um, I think uh, this action certainly does that. They're going to have a watchdog looking over them uh, for a number of years. Um, so it's going to be very difficult for them to operate in the way they were before. Yeah, so now one of the things that we have uh, been talking about uh, over the months uh, while while my way is around launch pads, in fact, even before we gone away, I think even we've, we've spoken about this, the, the one thing we want to do is uh, be positioned around launch pads in the bear market before it all gets hot in the bull. And I think, you know, with where we're at overall in the market, and as we've seen in the last few months, it is that time where a little bit of review of the portfolio is necessary, <laughs> I think, uh you know, yeah. things change, things evolve. Maybe tokens we once loved should not be loved no more. Uh, <laughs> we, and I think this this is the time. I think I've heard a few people refer to this as sort of uh, crypto spring at the moment. You know, we're not necessarily in uh, the height of summer uh, at the moment, but we it's the time where one should be prepared. Yeah, I think you're, you're definitely right, Max. And uh, I just sort of think back um, to the sort of the beginnings of, the last bull market and um, and sort of that DeFi summer, which sort of really the whole DeFi sector in that DeFi summer was just absolutely pumping and the rest of the market was was pretty, pretty stagnant. And I think um, this time around, the, the sort of pumps we've seen over this last month or two do give us a, a bit of a glimpse into um, the sort of stuff that's going to lead the charge and, and the narratives that are going to sort of really get this bull market rocking and rolling. And uh, I think what we've seen in the last month or two is extremely strong performances uh, in the gaming, AI, and then proof of work uh, coin uh, sectors. And of course, launch pads, which is what we're going to be discussing today. And I think if you're, if you're sort of sitting on a portfolio that hasn't really done very well in the last couple of months, it's, uh, it's probably a good time to, to sort of reassess what you're holding. Because if you haven't done well in the last couple of months, Perhaps you're you're holding some of the, or too many of those old stalwarts, as uh, as we like to say, from the last bull market, and uh, they're probably not going to outperform the gaming, AI, proof of work, and and launchpad sectors. I think they're going to be the absolute hottest new new narratives to sort of be following, and I think the the biggest X's are going to come from from those sectors. Yeah, and I think now with the Binance stuff, um, what you know, people will have different opinions about the settlement. But uh, at the end of the day, at least it's something that the market can can put aside because it was a bit of an overhang. Let's be honest. Um, and hopefully, in the new year, I think it's January ten, we're supposed to get an answer, or likely to get an answer on the, the Bitcoin ETFs. Um, hopefully, that can you know sort of propel us into a really strong uh, Q one next year. Yes. Um, so let's 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 reflect on the last bull market a little bit. And the the launch pad situation uh was something obviously that we got into for a while. And I think, you know, the the absolute key 
to the launch pads is getting yourself in at a good price in these launch pads because let's face it, a lot of the projects that launch on some of these, you know, last time they're hit and miss. Yeah. Some, some you do very well. Some there's a very low risk because obviously you're often putting in quite a small amount of money into these. Um, they're hit and miss, but you really where you get the big bang for the buck is obviously in the also in the token price being launched. One of the great things about launch pads is the token has very very clear utility. Uh, you need the token in order to participate in getting into new projects early, and everyone wants to be in new projects early, Matt. That's yeah, there's yeah. When the bull market's really roaring, um, you know, there's a hell of a lot of FOMO for new product launches, and and launch pads are the vehicle for investors to be able to get a seat at the table, uh, and and in many cases a guaranteed allocation in these new shiny toys. And we know that the new shiny toy narrative, Max, from bull market to bull market, the biggest X's on on uh, on, on show are usually from new token launches. So. Launchpads are a, a terrific way to, I guess, have some part of your portfolio exposed to the shiny new toy narrative. Yeah. Uh, well, do you want to sort of lead us off? I mean, what's your? We've got a few to go through here today. Yeah. But look, um, and these are in sort of no particular order, I guess. Um, yeah, we're going to cover sort of six or seven of them today, and we may well do a part two where we cover some others. Um, but uh, I think what we might do is start off with uh, a couple of the the Bluezilla launch pads and I guess you would call um, Bluezilla sort of a, a parent entity that sort of incubates new projects for any number of their their 10 different launch pads that they sort of have under their umbrella and Bluezilla were a major player in the last bull market they came into a great deal of prominence uh, with their extremely successful launch pad known as BSC pad uh, they have a very strong team they really know how to market new token launches and since that last bull market what we've seen is the mad several new launch pads to their their, their repertoire so let's uh, let's kick things off uh, talking about a couple of those which we think uh, may have sort of the most upside and firstly it's uh, meta vpad max so meta vpad uh, they're going to be launching metaverse and gaming related tokens both of these narratives as i said earlier are likely to be very hot in the next bull market and this one has a a very low market cap as well max have you got the uh, the gecko there somewhere. On, we do. Uh, We've always got gecko. Yeah, wrong. let's get the gecko going for there. Very low market cap. I think it's around the two and a half million mark. There are bounce. Three million. There you go. Um, so they, they offer a, a three tier system um, with each sort of tier guaranteeing access to their I, IDOs. So the higher the tier, the greater your allocation will be for their IDOs. So I think there's Explorer with 30,000 tokens that you need to be able to stake and, uh, and and qualify there. There's the creator tier, uh, 90,000 tokens, and the architect tier, which is 180,000 tokens. So if we just take the, the lowest of those, the explorer, 30,000 tokens, with a prevailing price max, what's that going to cost someone? About 400 bucks thereabouts for the, for the lowest tier? Then? Cost you four hundred and twenty dollars and eighteen cents. And and for the highest tier, 100, 180,000. So obviously the highest tiers, you're getting a greater allocation in the uh, in in the, in the launches that they conduct. So I really really like this one, Max. It's a uh, it's a, a low market cap option, and I think it hits the right narratives. Obviously, with the support of uh, Bluezilla, I think this one uh, this one can do very very well. Yeah, tend to agree. The one thing you know I will say on Bluezilla is that at times I think if you can get in that top uh, top tier is important because. I'd say traditionally the Bluezilla, they because they've got a number of launch pads, sometimes they do spread them over a few different ones of their launch pads, which does obviously also decrease the allocations that you do get. Yeah. I think being in the higher tiers in Bluezilla, I think certainly in, in the case of BSC pad, um, certainly pay dividends for you if you're able to get it. Yeah. Well, what's 180,000, which gives you the architect level, which is the highest nice tier? So about two and a half thousand dollars to get that. But obviously, um, the thing is, in if you come into this in a bull market, and let's just say, you know, I'd say uh, mid tier um, launch pads in the last bull market were sort of thirty to fifty million dollar market caps. Yeah, so call it a 10, 15 x from here. Then suddenly you're looking at twenty five grand plus to get in that. Yeah, market, right. I actually, I actually think this one will go a lot higher, um, only because it hits that gaming narrative. Um, and uh, that's why we've sort of selected yeah. this, this one. We do have some to to token about. emissions to come here. 
Yeah, there'll be some token emissions as well. Obviously, that happens over time, but uh, yeah. people can people can do their own research on that. Now, the next one that I think also has huge upside uh, in the Bluezilla ecosystem is AI Pad, and as the name suggests, uh, this launch pad will be covering all things AI. And personally, personally, I really do think that this will be among the hottest market categories in the next bull market. So this one should definitely be on your radar. The current market cap is also quite low, Max. It's very low. I don't know that that's right, actually. It's, it does, I'm not sure if that's right, 345K. I think, it's, uh, I think that's a bit of an error. I think it's uh, a bit more, a lot more than that, actually. But uh, the way AIPAD is actually, you know, sort of organised their, their tiers and everything, they're using a gamified leadership leaderboard system. So basically your placement and score on the leaderboard determines your ranking. And the top 1,000 users on the leaderboard get guaranteed access to their IDOs. Beyond that, I think they're using a, uh, a lottery ticket system. So it's kind of important to be in those sort of top 1,000 users. So um, I think, uh, yeah, that, that should be something if people are interested in this one that they should be aiming at. But I think, look, AI narrative is going to be very strong. There's rumours in the Bluezilla ecosystem that both Meta VPAD and AIPAD are going to get the lion's share, a lot of the best uh, token releases that Bluezilla put out. Now, whether that's true or not, who knows, but uh, it would kind of make sense that both of the, these launch pads hit that gaming and AI narrative, which I think is going to be very, very strong, Max. And then there's uh, the next one is a little more established, isn't it, Matt? We've got uh, Cedify. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Cedify, I mean, they were launched late in the last bull market. Um, they have a reputation, a really solid reputation for launching some great quality IDOs, and you can expect them to carry that forward uh, to the next bull market with a particular focus on gaming, AI, and metaverse projects. We've seen um, Cedify in the recent weeks even uh, almost triple uh, in price. So I think we're starting to see a, uh, a a big move into this one. I think it's going to be a ripper. You're going to see the likes of, you know, Alex Becker, Ran, uh, Elio, they're, they're all seemingly right behind this one. So they're going to kind of drive a lot of traffic um, to Cedify launches. So look, I think in the, what was its all-time high, Max? I think it might have been about 20 bucks late in the last bull market. Yeah, you're looking at uh, about $16, $17. Yeah. I think it may have gone a little bit higher, but but look, um, I I think in this next bull market, I think that price that that recent that all time high, uh, I think that's going to be absolutely blitzed. I think this one is going to be a huge winner, um, particularly around. I think it's going to have huge price pumps around major token launches, and I think this one, yeah, this one's kind of in my view, it's kind of like a blue chip uh, launch pad token. I think this is going to be an absolute ripper, Max. They actually have a whopping nine-tier system. Uh, I think I may have sent you the A lot of tiers. A lot of tier a lot of, a lot of tiers. But every single tier level, other than the lowest one, I think it is, has guaranteed access to IDOs. But obviously, the, the higher the tier that you're in, um, the bigger the allocations are going to be for you. But uh, I think this one is... Uh, is a winner, Max. Um, I think a lot of big money is starting to pour into this one again. And, yeah, I think uh, – I mean, I, I picked up some of these when they were back at about – I think they are about 60 cents, Max, back a month or two ago. Um, so it's been a, a really good performer for me. Whether or not it can keep this trajectory um, in the near term, who knows. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, had a, it's had a stellar run, but uh, I think it's got a lot more to go. It's worth pointing out probably as well that it's probably uh, about 3x away from market cap all-time high, obviously more yeah, than yeah. That since since last time. So whilst the price is still, you know, 8x away from, 8, 9x away from all-time high price, in terms of market cap, probably sitting 3, 4x away from being yeah. the same. So we, we still think it goes past. Well past. 60, I mean. Well past 360 million um, as a market cap, which it can do. But just worth noting the difference, I think, in all that. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Chain GBT. Now, this is a very interesting one because Chain GBT is both a launch pad but also a provider of AI services. So for me, this is kind of a, a bit of a dream boat. So you sort of get that AI component along with the launch pad component. Um, they're using what's called a fair tier system with um Bronze, silver, and gold. So bronze, silver, gold, and diamond making up their four tier system. In a nutshell, uh, the system rewards users with a multiplier 
depending on the length of their stake. So the longer you stake, the greater your multiplier. So your token holdings multiplied by the multiplier that you actually qualify for, however long you've staked for, determine your tier points and sub subsequently your tier level. That Obviously, the tier level is important because that's going to determine your allocation for new, new token list, listings. So although a relatively new kid on the block, they weren't around in the, um, the last bull market, they've conducted I IDOs for around, I think it's about five projects, two of which they incubated themselves. And look, the returns weren't huge. I think they were like five, 10 Xs. Um, but, you know, these, these things were launched in a bear market. And I think once the bull market rocks around and, you know, uh, things start to get hot again, I think those Xs are going to be a hell of a lot higher. So I'm quietly confident that Chain GBT is going to be a going to be a real winner, Max. Um, particularly with the you know obvious focus on AI, which is yeah, as I've said before, super hot category. It's made a bit of a move over the last week. I think it was down to about around the five five and a half cent mark. It's gone up to yeah eight point two cents now. So look, I still like this one. Not a lofty market cap. Um, I, not not for what it is. I, I can see this one doing extremely well, Max. Yeah. Tend to agree. Uh, it's just cooled off slightly. Yeah, uh, sort of hit ten cents. I think uh, you know, when we were talking about it, I was thinking at around five, six cents. Sure, it will go higher, but we always like to aim for the bargain bottom price, of course. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> um, you know, and sometimes that means you miss out completely. But such is life. There are there are many toys uh, in the sandpit to play with ahead of this bull <laughs> bull market. Sometimes it's just actually. Uh, making a decision of what to leave and what to take because it, it, when things are starting to take off, you feel like you want to have your chips in everywhere. But it um, that is that is the psychological game we play. Indeed. Here at the Badgers. Now, you've got a couple for us yeah, as well. A couple, Max, a couple of old favourites for me. Yeah, we've got some old favourites. New toy. We've done a video on Oxball before, um, but uh, they're just another one where... In the last market, these guys were exceptional. Now, one thing I'd say about Oxbow, at least last time, it is a smaller IDO platform. Generally, these guys, they I think they actually have the uh, the F the FD five where they're basically actually helping projects go from a 500k market cap to a five million market cap. They really focus on uh, small independent projects or incubate their own. Um, which means a couple of things. One, you actually tend to get slightly bigger allocations because yeah. uh, it's a, in general, it's a smaller launch pad uh, project. Therefore, you're not having to spread around $200,000 or $100,000 raise. You can get a much bigger piece of that pie. Um, so I think we found last time in some of these projects, Matt, that we, you know makes a big difference if you've got, say, $200 worth of allocation compared to 60 when you're talking about yeah, 10, 20, 30 X. Um, Absolutely. Uh, seriously adds up. And Oxbull has cooled off in price quite significantly over the bear market, like they all have, uh, down to 42 cents. I think the all-time high here was about $6, Matt. Um, yeah, I think it hit six a couple of times, didn't it? A couple it? of times, yeah. Yeah, uh, there you go. It had, it had a run up, a run down, and it went back up again. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, this, this was a massive winner for us, this one. They had, yeah. they had some great launches. And I think what, what I've really liked about Oxbow is they've been so good um, in the last bull market with just exploiting narratives. You know, when things have become, sectors have become hot, you know, they've been able to pump out projects um, and, and, and really, really do well. So, yeah, for me, this is a, this is a cornerstone for me of, of, of the launch pads I'm invested in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think ultimately this a the, the the price will go higher and b they also do the odd meme coin on here which we've seen do yeah. well and I think what was it last time Kate coin Kate coin oh my god that was massive Incredible. oh my yeah. god I think it was like yeah, that was one where we did get a small allocation I think maybe got like sixty bucks that turned into like three grand or something it was like and we didn't sell anywhere near the top we said we had we paid <laughs> way too soon um, and I of course just just worth pointing out you know you. You have you can have multiple wallets with this. So if you want to sort of maximise your uh, exposure to allocations, you just set up more wallets. Yeah, and then you can play some wallets more defensively. Sell when you know things two, three, four x on launch. Get your initials back, and then you can let those other other puppies ride. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'll stick on the uh, BNB chain here for a moment and go with Bull Perks. Now, uh, Bull Perks, we were also in for a period of time, and they had some fantastic launches. Probably 
had some bigger projects that they were able to attract compared to Oxpool. Um, one thing I didn't mention about Oxpool is that their platform always worked perfectly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never an issue with anything. Always got your allocations. That was brilliant. I would say with Bullperks, sometimes the platform was could either be a little buggy. They were their the token allocations sometimes were very much in the hands of the projects about releasing the tokens, which you know from time to time didn't come. But um, certainly we did uh, did very well on a couple of their projects um, last year. One thing I don't like about them is that they do move the tiers around and what it. Um, the, the, depending on price, you might feel as though you've got enough for a for a titanium. They say, well, it's, you need one hundred and fifty thousand now for a titanium, um, which you know I'm not the biggest fan of in terms of shifting the goalposts, but that that's what they do. Um, and it's also worth pointing out that the platinum, the two hundred fifty thousand BLP, is the only way to get guaranteed allocations. Uh, all the others are first come, first serve, obviously with different um, amounts of allocations attributed to both. I think they provided an example that with a uh, 100K raise, you're likely to see an $800 amount here if you're, say, a platinum holder that you'll get, which obviously is, is pretty decent in terms of launch pads. I'd, and if you're down in the gold area, you're looking at, say, between $100 and $200. Uh, down here being your allocation, which would be first come, first serve. So the yep. platinum one, that's sort of the only reason why we probably don't have this one at this stage, Matt, is that, you know, we like guaranteed allocations. We're not, you know, we look to avoid the uh, first come, first serve stress in our lives. <laughs> Very um, true. If, you, if, if you're quick on the trigger, then you can definitely, um, you know, get in one of those lower tiers and still get a decent allocation. I do just want to look up here what the uh, total amount is of getting that platinum. So that is still a bit punchy, even at today's prices. Yeah. Um, 250,000 is going to be, you know, nearly 15 grand to get into yeah. the tier there. So a lot more expensive than some of the others. Um, so that's probably the reason it's just a little bit less attractive, but they are very established. They have still been active in the bear market, still been building, and they've clearly got some quite good connections in this space. I think you said you you saw them talking on a YouTube clip about some lessons learned from the last bull market. Yeah, um, yeah. it's probably about a probably about a month ago, I guess. I watched a uh, an AMA. Um, who was it? The co-founder uh, Aaron Alhanani, and they've they've learned a lot of lessons from from uh, the last bull market. They've spent a lot of time incubating projects, helping new projects along, and and I guess as is the case with almost all of these launch pads, Max. You know, they're not launching a lot of stuff now because the market's not hot enough. But you can bet your bottom dollar that they're all stockpiling um, a pipeline of new token launches so that when we start to get to better times, more consistent times, and we know that we're in a bull market, I think you'll start to see a flood of these token launches come out. Um, but I do I do think that bull, park, bull perks are very, very much on the right track. I think they'll do well. Yeah, it's one of those. Was, it, was it Blocktopia we had last time from there? Yeah, that was amazing. That was high, um, high street. I think it was yeah, oh, high street. Yes, indeed. Um, the Eve Bull perks was to get down to that. I mean, it's probably being a little overly aggressive. It did in the bear get close, but in that sort of two, two to three cent range. And you could pick up a plat. You like to be able to pick up a platinum for five k. I just don't know if we're going to get that opportunity. But I don't yeah. think we're going to go that low, Max. Not now. Yeah. But uh, but it is a good one. They have quality launches, or we found that they had quality launches anyway. And yeah, some some big X's on offer from uh, from some of those. Yeah. I think Blocktopia did like four hundred X, didn't it? Something oh, crazy. Uh, let's see. let's just have some fun on Blocktopia here. Yeah, but that that won't show you the uh, the X's. It'll only show you the starting. Yeah, because it was lower than we got it for lower than a cent, and it went fifteen. Yeah, it was like a thousand. I think it was. Something. Yeah, it was. It was a four hundred, five hundred x something silly. Um. Okay. So the last one I was going to look at here is Poker Starter, which is pretty well established. Uh, Poker Starter's probably been. Um. I guess would you would you call it a bit of a darling of the launch pad, uh, space? Yeah, I mean, it did very, very well in the last bull market. Again, they have sort of known for having sort of more quality projects um, that they launched. So, yeah, this is uh, another good one. You know, they've raised $50 million. They've done 112 projects, um, you know, 35,000 
over 35,000 unique participants, um, you know, cross-chain, clearly well-connected in the space. Um, what I do like about them is that they, so it's quite a simple procedure they have. I mean, it is a lottery system, so you don't get the guaranteed allocations, but the more every 250 tokens that you have gets you an extra entry into the lottery. So obviously the more tokens you have, the, the bigger the chance you are of getting allocations. Um, so you don't have to worry about staking and having to lock your tokens away for 100 days. You can just hold your tokens and you will ultimately go into the draw. And they've, they've been pretty active in recent times as well, which I think is something important to look at. Um, there will be some launch pads who probably you know go quiet for two years and they're probably starting to get their accounts active again. Uh, not saying those can't do well, but I think, when you look at projects that have been continually building uh, in in the space despite the bear market, I think that's a pretty good sign that they're going to be around. You know, if they can survive this, and they, then they're still going to be around when the bull market hits. Um, I know, like Oxball is another example of that. They haven't maybe launched many projects, but they're continually improving the platform, getting themselves ready um, for that next for that next step. So. Um, yeah, they've been doing some uh, some cross chain swaps. Had their three year anniversary, and I think here's just a few stats around Polka Starter. I mean, it's a massive community, six hundred thousand community members. Um, so that's what makes them very attractive for big projects to work with, because obviously, it's a, it's from a marketing point of view, it's a great way to get your project out in the in the public domain. Um, lots of, lots of holders. And they've also, of course, got their coin listed on Binance, KuCoin, Kraken, and Coinbase, which I think would be certainly the biggest exchanges of any launchpad token out there. So it's very easy to acquire for sort of retail investors um, who are using those exchanges. So whilst yeah. whilst that, say, the market cap of this one is a little bit higher, and I would say that, you know, it's probably... a a reasonable chance that it won't do the X's of a Meta VPAD, for example, at $34 million market cap. I I feel as though with something like Polk Starter, it is very, very, very likely that this will increase in price as the bull market hits. And you've got the safety of knowing it's a very established team. And it's highly, highly unlikely that this token is going anywhere or going to fail. Um and I think, you know, it's it's acted also with with quite good integrity in the three years that it's been around. So probably the more serious player, maybe if you're like a bit of a D-gen and want to get started, and you, but you're like, mm, meta VPAD, I don't know if I want to quite go down here or to a $300,000 market cap called AI pad. <laughs> you don't want to dive deep into those burrows like uh, some badges do. <laughs> and I think Polka Start is a pretty good option. And you can still see it's well away from its its all time high in the in the bull there. I mean, a top market cap of around three hundred and fifty million. Um, so it's ten X below that at the moment. And all the emissions are basically out, which I do like. Don't have to factor that. Yeah, that's an important thing, Max. Yes. Yeah, I think um I mean look, we haven't touched on absolutely all of the launch pads out there today. I mean, uh, the other big one. Um, is obviously make a DAO, but that's a that's one that uh, costs a lot more to get into. They're on all all the prominent exchanges as well. There's Decubate, Trustpad, you know, Engine Starter, Paid Network, and uh, and Star Launcher. You know, I think there is room, uh, depending on your risk risk appetite, of course, uh, for sort of some percentage of your uh, portfolio to be exposed to these launchpad, which by virtue of that. Uh, gives you going to give you access to a lot of these uh, shiny new toys. So, you know, you could do worse than sort of taking a, a basket of these launch pads. So you're not necessarily, you know, sort of wholly committed to just one of them um, and sort of riding it out that way. Um, the other thing I'll say as well, um, I, I'd strongly suggest anyone that's looking at going into these launch pads to, when they're buying, uh, but, you know, they've picked the tier that they want to qualify for. Um, so let's say it's a thousand tokens in something. To, to, to get to the tier you want to get to, buy 1,200 or buy 1,300 of them. Leave the extra two or 300 unstaked. Um, leave them in your wallet so that you can take advantages in pumps on the, the platform or the launch pad price in the lead up to major launches because you do see often see a big, big spike up uh, and you can take advantage of that by selling off uh, some of those uh, extra tokens that you have. I think that's uh, something well worth considering, Max. 
Very savvy play. Very savvy. Yeah. And the, just, the, just the final thing as well, um, you know, some of these launch pads do require KC, KYC uh, to be able to participate in, in these launches. So um, you need to check on on that, uh, in, you know, depending on what, what your jurisdiction is, of course, uh, as to whether you're, you know, allowed to even participate. So uh, that's something to consider as well. But I think in a general sense, I know for me, Max, we did incredibly well in the last bull market out of launch pads. I'm, I'm definitely... You know, I've definitely gone a lot heavier this time around because um, I want as much exposure as possible to the shiny new toys, my friend. We love shiny new toys. <laughs> we do. Um, all right. Well, I reckon that's a wrap for today, Matt. Um, the badges are back. And let's uh, bring on the bull market. Start. I'm going to call the bull market starting in early 2024, spring to the end of the year. Yeah, me too, Max. And uh, look, we'll be covering a lot in, in regards to launch pads and, and some of the individual launches that occur on these launch pads. So do give us a, um, you know, sort of subscribe and yeah, and, and a like and uh, follow our journey. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Maxie. You're a legend. Good to have you back. Wimbo, sir. Coming live Coming from the crypto, crypto world. world. Bringing you all that you need. Let's go. This is the YouTube Crypto Show with two guys who are kind of in the know. Crypto badges are here, so you're in the clear. No worry or fear, yeah, we're helping you steer. Shouts to the team, we can't forget. Max Power and Bazi Dips. Don't get wrecked, a pump would be nice. But remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto badges.